All right, hello, greetings. Today is the sixth week of Great Lent Tuesday, and the scripture readings are Isaiah 49, 6 through 10, Genesis 31, 3 through 16, Proverbs 21, 3 through 21. I haven't been doing this in a while. My son and I both have been sick. Uh, he's still sick. I just got a little bit of a cough. Hopefully it doesn't start up. <coughs> um, yeah, he's got he's got mono. He he's pretty much over the uh, strep throat, but his throat's really swelling up big with the mono. So he's got ear infection. He's pretty uncomfortable sometimes, but and tired. So I've been focusing on that and my work, but uh, I've, I've been still doing the readings, but I just didn't have time or energy to do these videos, so please keep us in your prayers. Alright, so Isaiah 49, 6. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to him whom man despises, <coughs> to him whom the nation abhors, to the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. Thus says the Lord, in an, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people, to restore the earth, to cause them to inherit the desolate heritages, that you may say to the prisoners, Go forth to those who are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed along the roads, and their pastures shall be on all desolate heights. They shall neither hunger nor thirst, neither heat nor sun shall strike them. For he who has mercy on them will lead them. Even by the springs of water he will guide them. To him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhors. <coughs> he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and be satisfied. By his knowledge my rightness servant, or my righteous servant, shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Isaiah 53, 3-12 Christ, the remedy for mankind. The Son of God assumed human nature, and in it he endured all that belongs to the human condition. 
This is a remedy for mankind of a power beyond our imagining. Could any pride be cured if the humility of God's Son does not cure it? Could any greed be cured if the poverty of God's Son does not cure it? Or any anger if the patient patience of God's Son does not cure it? Or any coldness if the love of God's Son does not cure it? Lastly, what fearfulness can be cured if it is not cured by the resurrection of the body of Christ the Lord? Let mankind raise its hopes and recognize its own nature. Let it observe how high a place it has in the works of God. Do not despise yourselves, you man. The Son of God assumed manhood. Do not despise yourselves, you women. God's Son was born of a woman. But do not set your hearts on the satisfactions of the body, for in the Son of God we are neither male or female. Galatians 3.28 Do not set your heart on temporal rewards. If it were good to do so, that human nature which God's Son assumed would have thus set its heart. Do not fear insults, crosses, and death, for if they did man harm, the humanity which God's Son assumed would not have endured them. St. Augustine of Hippo on the Christian Struggle, 12, Book 15, page 218. Genesis 31, 3 Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your kindred, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field to his flock, and said to them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not favorable toward me as before. But the God of my father has been with me, and you know that with all my might I have served your father. Yet your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God did not allow him to hurt me. If he said thus, The speckled shall be your wages, then all the flocks were speckled. And if he said thus, The streaked shall be your wages, then all the flocks were streaked. So God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. And it happened at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the flocks were streaked, speckled, and gray-spotted. Then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray-spotted. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your kindred. Then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there still any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not considered strangers by him? For he has sold us, and also completely consumed our money. For all these riches which God has taken from our father are really ours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do it. The Lord said to Jacob, Return into the land of your fathers. The first virtue, indeed, the whole of virtue, is to be a stranger to this world and a sojourner, and to have nothing in common with things here but to hang loose from them. He said to Abraham, Leave that which seems your country and come to one that is foreign. And he did not cleave to his kindred, but gave it up as unconcernedly as if he were about to leave a foreign land. He said to him, Offer up your son, and he offered him up as if he had no son, as if he had divested himself of his nature, so he offered him up. The wealth which he had acquired was common to all passers-by, and this he accounted as nothing. He yielded the first places to others. He threw himself into dangers. He suffered troubles innumerable. He built no splendid houses. 
He enjoyed no luxuries. He had no care about dress, which all thing which are which all are things of this world, but lived in all respects as belonging to the city uh, yonder. He showed hospitality, brotherly love, mercifulness, forbearance, contempt for wealth, and for present glory, and for all else. And his son, too, was such as himself. When he was driven away, when war was made on him, he yielded and gave way, as being in a foreign land. For foreigners, whatever they suffer, endure it, as not being in their own country. Even when his wife was taken from him, he endured this also, as being in a strange land, and lived in all respects as one whose home was above, showing sober-mindedness and a well-ordered life. And what did Jacob do? Did he not seek only bread and raiment, which are asked for by those who are truly strangers, by those that have come to great poverty? When he was driven out, did he not give place as a stranger? Did he not serve for hire? Did he not suffer innumerable afflictions everywhere as a stranger? St. John Chrysostom, homily 24 on Hebrews 11, 4, 1, 4, book 58, pages 473, 474, and 475. Because of his crying need, the patriarch endured the scorching heat of the day, and he bore the frost of the night daily making gains, shepherding, struggling, slaving in order to win two wives. Genesis 29, 16-30, 31-40. But the two wives understand action and direct knowledge and contemplation. Leah as action, for she had many children, and Rachel as knowledge, which is obtained by much labor. For without labors, my soul, neither action nor contemplation will achieve success. It's a lot to think about. Righteous Joseph was given up by his brothers. That sweet soul was sold into slavery as a type of the Lord. And you, my soul, have sold yourself completely to your vices. Genesis 37, 27 through 28. Imitate. Wretched and worthless soul, righteous Joseph, in his pure mind, and do not be wanton with irrational desires, ever transgressing. Genesis 39, 7-23 If Joseph of old also occupied a pit, O sovereign Lord, yet it was as a type of thy burial and rising, but will I ever offer thee anything like it? Genesis 37 St. Andrew of Crete, the Great Canon, Canticles 4 and 5, Book 28b, page 9. Proverbs 21, 3. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. A haughty look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked are sin. The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. Getting treasures by a lying tongue is the fleeting fantasy of those who seek death. The violence of the wicked will destroy them because they refuse to do justice. The way of a guilty man is perverse, but as for the pure, his work is right. It is better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. The soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no favor in his eyes. When the scoffer is punished, the simple is made wise. But when the wise is instructed, he receives knowledge. The righteous God wisely considers the house of the wicked, overthrowing the wicked for their wickedness. What about your wickedness? 
Whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. A gift in secret pacifies anger and a bribe behind the back strong wrath. It is a joy for the just to do justice, but destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the congregation of the dead. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the unfaithful for the upright. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. He who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness and honor. Whoever shuts his ear ears to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6 2. See also Matthew 25 31 through 46. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. A certain brother committed an offense in Skeet, the camp of the monks. And when a, a congregation was assembled on this matter, <coughs> they sent after Abba Moses, but he refused to come. Then they sent the priest of the church to him, saying, Come, for all the people are expecting you. And he rose up and came. And he took a basket with a hole in it, and filled it with sand, and carried it on his shoulders. And those who went out to meet him said to him, What does this mean, Father? And he said to them, The sands are my sins, which are running down behind me, and I cannot see them. And I, even I, have come this day to judge shortcomings which are not mine. And when they heard this, they set free that brother and said nothing further to him. Athanasius of Alexandria, Palladius of Helenopolis, et al., the Paradise of the Holy Fathers, book number 21, 542, page 122. I used to have that set of books and I highly recommend it. Those are very good books. All right, so that reading was from the Bible and the Holy Fathers for Orthodox, which you can get from St. Herman, no, excuse me, St. Vladimir's Seminary Press, Crestwood, New York, 2003. <coughs> All right, that's it for today. Please pray for me, a sinner. God bless. Over and out.